Welcome to Electron Align. We realize now that the moon travels around the Earth in a plane that's different from the ecliptic plane between the Earth and the Sun. We know now there's about a five degree difference between that orbit, which means that most of the time the moon will spend its time above or below the ecliptic plane so that there's no possibility at that time for the moon to get right between the Earth and the Sun, blocking out the light of the Sun. But on its path, as it goes around the, the Earth, twice in its orbit around the Earth, which takes 27.3 days, the moon will be between, uh, not necessarily between the Earth and the Sun, but will be on the ecliptic plane. But most of the time when it does that, it will be on the ecliptic plane, not in a position between the Earth and the Sun, therefore not able to block out the light. But once in a while, on average about twice a year, it will happen as the moon goes into the ecliptic plane, it'll then enable the light to be blocked out from the sun and we'll experience a solar eclipse. Now sometimes we'll experience what we call a total solar eclipse where all the light is blocked and sometimes only a partial solar eclipse. And sometimes we call it an annual solar eclipse where you can still see the ring of the sun around the moon. Of course, when you do that, you have to have special glasses on to protect your eyesight. But let's, let's assume for a moment that we're experiencing a total solar eclipse. Unfortunately, for the people on the Earth, it only happens in a very small region on the Earth. Usually, the moon, the moon shadow will just make a strip on the Earth. That's because the size of the moon and the size of the Earth are approximately the same size. And because of that, the moon just barely covers the disk of the sun, and the shadow formed just forms a nice little strip that then moves across the Earth as the relative motion of the Earth to moon and relative to the sun, of course, ensues. What the people get to see, when you happen to be right somewhere in that strip, you'll slowly begin to see the disk of the sun disappearing. Notice it gets smaller, smaller, smaller. At some point, the entire disk is covered by the moon, and then you can see the corona, that's a very, high, very highly ionized gas on the, uh, basically outside of the atmosphere of the sun, gets lighted up by the energy that hits it and the solar particles that hit it. It heats it up to very high temperature. You can see the glow only during a total solar eclipse. The solar eclipse typically only lasts for a few minutes. The longest is a little over seven minutes that we've experienced. And then the disk of the sun begins to appear again and becomes bigger and bigger and bigger as the disk of the moon then slowly moves away from in front of the sun and the sun can shine again. This whole process probably lasts about an hour a little bit more than an hour, but the time of totality, when the complete disk is covered, only lasts for a few minutes typically, and only for a very small percentage of people on the Earth that just happen to be right there on the location where the solar eclipse occurs. And again, the reason why it's a rare event is because most of the time the Moon will not be on the ecliptic plane when it passes between the line from the Earth to the Sun. It's only about once or twice a year you have a good opportunity for that to happen and it's happened as much as five times a year but that is a very rare event most of the time it's right around two times per year and that's a solar eclipse due to the, due to the moon's motion